I want you to think back to the 70s, 80s. At that time, we humans, we created the first robots ever to get into our world. These robots came into manufacturing industry, mainly producing cars. They were big, they were heavy, they were difficult to program, they were doing mass volume production, but they were also unsafe because they were blind, they were not able to see what they were doing, so they were basically just moving but not knowing what they did. So that is going on in the 70s and the 80s, and when we get up to the 90s, these robots get a little bit more advanced. We put on cameras and other type of sensors, so these robots can now see what is happening in the workspace. They can see the objects they're working with, and in that way they become more flexible. And we've been working with these robots for a long time, but in 2005, close to that, there was a completely new generation of robots coming in. These robots are called collaborative robots. And they are different. They can sense the environment around them, people being close to them, uh, and sense what the people are doing and want to do. And also there are force feedback sensors in the robot itself. So if you touch the robot, it stops moving, or even if you get close to it, it can sense it and stop. So they are safe. So they are collaborative. You work together with it. So these are the new robot assistants. It's not just in industry. This is also in hospitals and many other places. So this is what we have already today. Let us look at another thing. Exponential growth in computational power is really an important and a very interesting thing. You know how computational power continues to grow exponentially. Today, if you spend $1,000, you can buy a computer chip which has a computational power just like a small mouse. But in six, seven years from now, in 2023, it has the computational power as a human brain. And think about it, it makes a huge difference on the robots. Because robots will have to sense the environment, understand what is happening, and think about what they learn so that they can change their behavior. All of that comes down to brain power or computational power. So therefore, we are in a revolution now where the robots change from being, first they were blind and stupid and dangerous, then they were collaborative, and then what? My suggestion is, my proposal is, what we will see over the next 10 years is what I call the cloud worker robots. Let's talk about that. The cloud worker robot is really a robot which is connected to the cloud. It gets information from the cloud about what to do, and the cloud is operated in such a way that when you start up the robot, maybe the robot does not exactly know how to do the things. Let's say you have the robot in your kitchen. Maybe the robot is not exactly knowing how to do the omelet for you. But someone out in the cloud, they will be a cloud worker. Some person will be connected to the cloud and to the robot. And they will take over the control of the robot and do the omelet for you by operating the robot. And that is kind of the first uh, butler robot we get. It's operated like this. What happens is that the robot will save the way that operator, that cloud worker, it will save in the cloud the way it has been done to make that omelet. And then this robot can learn through that to actually do it by itself. So it will be autonomous. It doesn't need that operator over time. So that's the cloud worker we can have. Small, simple robots installed many places. In the beginning, cloud worker people connect to the robot, take over control of the robot, show or guide and operate the robot to do the job. But over time, and with the big data and artificial intelligence put into the cloud, 
The robot will be able to do it by itself. This is what we will see over the next 10 years. But it's not just sci-fi. I want to show you that we already have some of these cloud workers today, but the people participating do not know that they are cloud workers. Let me show you one example here. This is an autonomous driving car. You know that in 2020, the European laws for this is in place. All car manufacturers in the entire world are today building self-driving or robotic cars. What is happening is that when you're driving autonomously and you get into a situation and the robot does not know how to handle it, the robot or the car asks the driver to take over the driving. And at the same time, the robot locks all this, monitors, put it into a server, and this happens on tens of thousands of cars every day. And then based on big data, artificial intelligence, every day the robot can crunch all this data and learn in the cloud how to actually drive the car more autonomously. So every day your car gets more and more autonomous. And one day, it will never ask you again to actually drive the car. It will always drive autonomously. And at some point, it will be much, much better than any one of us to drive. It's reacting 12 times faster than any human can physiologically ever do. There are other places where we see things like this, like surgery. It's being done by connecting remotely to a robot. This guy is now, this dog is sitting just close to um, the robot, but he could be a thousand kilometers away. Right, oh my god, we already have one of these robots. <laughs> Pretty scary. Okay, thank you, Martin. So, um, yeah, so we could be very distant. Martin could be on the other side of the well. It wouldn't make a difference. We can already operate like that. The, the surgeon here can be very remotely connected to the robot and make the robot do the job. We see it also with drones. You know that we have control centers. They are operating the drones. Basically, the drones do most, much uh, and most of the work themselves. But we can actually take over control of the drones and do specific things and help them on that mission. Future applications, they're actually a lot. I mean, uh, industry, like picking up parts like this, it's obvious to have someone to control a robot in the beginning. Then the robot will learn, and it can do it automatically after some time. So that's industry, this is shopping, some of the initial testing of that, picking things from shelves, packaging and stuff like that. We can see this as in construction industry. Today the workers are operating the robot, but they could be in the cloud, uh, controlling the robot, and the robot could do, learn to do it by themselves. This is what we will see. Uh, this is agriculture, so learning how to uh, deal with crops and uh, uh, weed and so on but it could also be gardening. Get a robot home in your garden to do all the dirty work while you're at, while you're at your work, right? It's not a bad idea, really. Uh, doing uh, cooking, that's obvious. Have someone to connect to the robot. Uh, in your kitchen, you call home and you say, I want a pizza, I want whatever, when you get home, and someone is doing that for, do, for you. Either it's the robot because it has already learned, or it's someone that has connected to your butler robot and then they're doing the work. So what, what does it take to be a cloud worker? My bet is that most of you will, within the next 10 years, be thinking about, should I take a job as a cloud worker and become an expert in controlling and operating these robots? So basically what you do is you have your, you have your computer, maybe a game uh, console, a game device, and then you go to the web page, cloud worker web page, you sign up, and then first you get the ability to train some simulated robots. When you pass that test, you get a certificate. Now you get to work with real robots, but they're in a lab. They're still in a the lab. Then you work with these, and once you're good enough, you get a certificate again. And now you get real robots out there. And now you can start doing a real job and earn money. Train robots and always support the robots when they need help, only when they need help or do surveillance of the robots and help them when they need it. So we've done some initial studies on this. So one person, we can increase by one person, can now be, be as productive as five to 20 people are today. 
So it will be a giant leap in our productivity. That means that we can save a lot of time. People can either work less or do other things that are more funny. We also think we can have a butler robot in our home for something down to $70 a month. I think most of us would want to buy one at that point. So what we've seen already today is that you start by working with one robot. So one cloud worker will connect to one robot and train. But actually, over a very short period of time, especially we see this with logistic robots right now, you can have one guy operating 150 robots because they quickly learn how to do the things, so you only do surveillance and help when needed. There's a lot of good uh, things about uh, this, but there are also some uh, challenges or dilemmas. Some of the good things is that um, anyone can set up a production company or provide service or you can get help at home. Anyone can get that. That's great. Anyone can actually also get a job. I mean, you can get a job in a production company in China. You become a cloud worker, you operate the robots in China. It's great. But what about, what about salaries and labor union and structures and rules and we're just kicking out Uber from Denmark just recently? I mean, how will this affect labor force and the ability to earn money? So a lot of questions. I don't think we have the answers, but this technology is coming, and we need to find the answers for this. Another dilemma, privacy. That butler robot, you don't want just anyone to get into your kitchen. You need to know who they are before they get access to your kitchen and your food and stuff. And I think the last thing about on the dilemma side is you will start, as a cloud worker, you'll start uh, operating the robot, you'll start training them. Then they become autonomous to some degree. You will support them, do supervision. But then at some point, will the robots have learned more and more and more until a point where they will tell you how you should have done your job? <laughs> because they get smarter. Will there be a conflict there or a problem? We don't know. But we're certainly heading that way to find an answer within the next 10 years. So I think I want to welcome you to the future, welcome you to your new job as a cloud worker. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, sir.